Guys, I've got a donation. This one was sent in to me by Patrick over at Excess Remarketing. He sent me a couple BiPAPs and we're gonna go through them. We're gonna open them up. We're gonna take a look at how dirty some of these can get and some of the problems that they're gonna have. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we're going to be going over BiPAPs. And the reason I'm going over these is because these are two donation units that were sent to me by Patrick over at XS Remarketing. I'll leave his info in the description down below. He does stuff like this every once in a while. You know, he'll send something cool that uh, I've never seen before or maybe something to play around with for you guys. So we can do this here together. So anyway, thanks Patrick. Thanks XS Remarketing. Appreciate it. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these two units. I would love to be able to fix these first off. But um, these are a little bit old. They're past their life expectancy, but there are many of them still in service. So is it important that you should know what's going on? Yeah, maybe. They're being phased out, that's fine, but some of them are still in service. And maybe if you do proper cleaning, proper calibration, you can squeeze by another year or so. But anyway. Let's take a look. This is actually a stripped down version of the BiPAP. I have the motor out. There's normally a large blower and it will normally look a lot like this guy right here. You see how it's all compacted in there? But this is a BiPAP. It's very similar to a CPAP that you guys might be more familiar with. A CPAP is a continuous positive airway pressure device. And this is a BiPAP, which means that it has two different levels of pressure and it's bi-directional. So one level of pressure is for inhaling and it actually aids you on exhaling too. So that's your second airway pressure. And that's why it's called a BiPAP. Now these units are usually used to help people with COPD. That's uh, chronic obstructed pulmonary disease. Anyway. I have it all written over here because there's a lot to go along with this stuff. And uh, COPD is basically why a lot of people lose uh, oxygen levels when they relax at night. So you see people wearing the mask and that is normally for CPAP. If you are in a hospital and maybe you have a patient that is suffering from uh, some pulmonary and cardiac disease, they will often have them sitting on one of these guys at night because it helps them breathe and it, they need the oxygen level to be maintained in their body. And we don't want to put an invasive method like a uh, ET tube, that's an endotracheal tube. We don't want to have to do that to patients because that induces a whole lot of other complications. So this is considered a, um, a non-invasive procedure because it's usually used with a mask. Anyway, inside these bad boys, is a massive turbine blower like this guy here and I already took this guy a little bit apart so that you can see inside it because it is not what you think it is. First off there's a muffler and the reason that they have a muffler is because things that spin generally have a high pitch whine especially when it's a very small thin bladed uh, rotor like this guy here that's gonna emit a high-pitched whine as it's slinging air. But this guy here, it's got that giant muffler that sits on it. And what's going on here is there isn't very much uh, room between the lid, which is your induction port, and then this guy spins, it slings the air around to the outside, and it creates like a pressure buffer on this ring. So this pressure buffer is moving, and eventually it just slings out but it creates a pressure buffer here so that the motor can speed up and slow down or whatever it's got to do, but there is a level of pressure that's being maintained without a pressure reservoir. So kind of neat how they designed that guy, but it slings the air around at a really fast rate and it packs the air molecules here, which is what creates your pressure, and then it exports out to your mixing valves, which we'll go into next. So anyway, that's the motor. It's a cool little guy. Um, 
I do believe that that's a three-phase motor, plus it probably has a speed sensor embedded. I wish I could pull it apart further. So I took a cover off the back, which actually has got a gasket on it. It's got a rear bearing. So it, this motor is built really, really well. I appreciate it. So in order to pull anything else apart, i got to pull the rotor off, which you guys will never, ever be doing this. Wow, <laughs> that is in there, guys. That is in there, let me tell you. Yeah, that is not coming off. I'll probably need an impact gun or something on that. Oh well, anyway, since the rotor is really thin aluminum, it's probably uh, spinning quite fast inside this housing, and that's how it's gonna build up that pressure. What an amazing little thing. The body of the blower is composite. Actually sounds really nice. Um, so it's really well built. Everything about this is really nice. I appreciate it. So uh, here is a, um, a toroid transformer. And I don't know if this is just a regular uh, isolation transformer. Since it's got all the secondaries out, I think that it probably kicks down the voltage several different layers. You know, you might have like 12 volt, probably uh, 5 volt for the circuitry. See these giant uh, capacitors back here. Anyway, the reason I pulled the motor out is that you guys can see this, this fan back here, this cooling fan. And it blows air across the back of the motor. And the motor has this collar and the collar is clamped straight to the motor and this helps uh, dissipate some of the heat that's built up you know from continuous use but this guy sits right here next to this fan so you got to get it clean and this motor back here this fan is always dirty on every single machine i've ever looked at it's very dirty you can see this guy here is not much better so you got your power supply board you've got your uh, toroid transformer you have a couple different boards down here. Now, your bottom board has got a uh, RAM EE prom. It's a yellow battery. And then there's a second battery, which is located on the inside of the cover, normally right here on this board. I'll show you on that one. But uh, this one was removed because they're being parted out. And the reason they're being parted out is because they're not easy to find parts for anymore. Membrane buttons, like right here on the front panel, these go bad all the time. And I can see where somebody put tape over these membrane buttons, but that would still technically fail a PM. And you can see that uh, there's been some hard impacts on this front display. Luckily, it is not a touchscreen display, because that would have killed a touchscreen. But uh, you've got a pressure monitoring port, you have your patient output port, and uh, alarms buttons one, Encoder, that's how you interface with it. Uh, the dreaded uh, error code. I'll show you what that sounds like. It's very annoying. But uh, So that's the front panel. It normally has the CPU board on the back. This one does not. Anyway, we've got uh, a alarm speaker. We've got a, um, this is a motor driver board. And I can tell because of your FETs over here and your fan will normally plug into this port right here. This guy goes to the front front panel. Um, I've got a couple different pressure sensors and I think this is for how they do the differential pressures. So you got two different pressure sensors here. Um, there is a tie-in because in order for you to enter into maintenance mode on these guys, there is a laptop that you fit on some pins and that's over here in the corner normally. Here's another uh, pressure sensor. You can see it right here. Yep, so I got one, two, three different pressure sensors on these boards. Um, they're all very old. I can see the software revision is 2003. What do you expect? These over here should be your digital mixers. Now, I don't know which one does what, but there are two different ones, and like I said, it is a BiPAP, so there's two different pressures, and uh, here, you guys can see what those look like. So there's one, there's a second one down there, 
two different mixers. This is where your blower interfaces. So your positive pressure comes in here, comes down there. And uh, then this guy up here is a mixer that would be for your um, O2 that comes in from the wall. So there is normally an O2 line that plugs in and this guy helps mix the O2 with uh, regular compressed air. So that's how you bump up your O2 percentages. Because as you guys know, atmospheric is 21% oxygen. So this guy could bump it up and mix it even higher percentage all the way up to 100%. But uh, all these parts are old, July 2003, 2007, you know. But for educational purposes, it is definitely worth it. So let's go ahead and show you guys the inside of one of these. So this is my other unit and you can see that there's some tabs down there that normally this front cover will sit on. I've got them disconnected because I don't really think I need it. I, I need to be able to tilt it so that you guys can see it. Right here there is a four pin which is for your membrane buttons. You can see that there's a power cable right there in the middle and there's a data cable over there, that ribbon. And take notice that there is another lithium battery right there. It looks like a double A battery, it's white. It's right there in the middle of the board. That is the other battery that has to be changed out. And all these devices need those batteries changed out every like four or five years. And these ones haven't, and I think that might be one of the error codes. Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like. So it does some quick self checks and the dreaded error code. You can hear that it spins up. It spins up the fan, which is very dirty down in there. And then it just throws an error code. So I don't know what to do about that. Maybe I'll just goof around and try and swap that board over to this unit. Not really sure yet. But either way, it's pretty much dead in the water. This one has a much nicer front interface panel. Much nicer. This one looks really good. And this one here was all broke up. So maybe I'll switch some parts over to try and get it functioning. But um, that's pretty much it. That's a BiPAP. And this one here is a very, very famous one. This is the BiPAP Vision. And the BiPAP Visions were, I don't know, I'd like to say that they pretty much had the market for a while. So they're still in the field. You can still find them everywhere. Um, it's a cool device. Problem is, is you have to have admin access, yeah, you know, a laptop, a serial cable. They're kind of a pain to get in and do anything to, even reset the clocks or whatever. It's, it's a pain. But they're still out there, so we still have to know some things about them. Now, I don't do very much with these uh, machines at all. And uh, that's why my knowledge would be somewhat limited. I do think that people should know what these machines can do and how they're used. You know, it, the fact that it's a non-invasive uh, treatment for respiratory failures, you know, that's something that I think all biomeds should know. You don't have to know all the details of this stuff, but just knowing if it's not powering up, you know, maybe take a look at these boards. If it's got all of these critical other error codes, geez, I hope you have a laptop to hook up to it. Um, and good luck getting it serviced. But there you go. That's the BiPAP Vision. Guys, uh, thank you again to Patrick over at XS Remarketing for these machines. I do appreciate it so I can show you guys the insides of them. And uh, maybe if I can get one of them up and running, maybe I'll do a video and show you guys what it's like when it actually is running. Because it's kind of cool. It's, just, uh, it's, <laughs> it's like a blower and it kicks out a hell of a lot of air. That's simple enough. But uh, a very smart blower. You'll see these all over in hospitals, especially cardiac wings, respiratory. But uh, they're there. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please give me a thumbs up. And in about one week, I'm going to be at the um, MD Expo in Vegas. I hope to see you there. If you do, come on out. I might have a shirt for you. I've got stickers I'm going to be handing out, a whole bunch of stuff. And I've got a very big thing that I'm going to share with you guys once I'm on the floor out there. Because... Uh, if you guys don't know, I've been through quite a bit of, of stuff recently and I've got some big reveals to make and I'll be doing that at the Expo coming up in a week, the 1st and the 2nd of November, MD Expo, Las Vegas. Hope to see you there, guys. Okay?
All right. Thanks for watching.